दोस्तों भाइयों बुजुर्ग को कुछ बहनों अच्छे बैठे हुए हैं मेरी तरफ से सबको सलाम वालेकुम सबसे पहले तो बड़ी खुशी हो रही है कि इतने लोग इतने थोड़े कम वक्त में इकट्ठे हो गए हैं यहाँ हमारी मुलाकात के लिए आ, कुछ चेहरे ऐसे लोग हैं जहाँ मैं बचपन से जानता हूँ कुछ हैं जो मैं नहीं पहचानता लेकिन मैं अपना थोड़ा सा तारुफ कर रहा हूँ कि मैं हलीफैक्स में बचपन गुजरा है मेरा मेरे कुछ काफ़ी साल भी गुजरे हैं दस साल पहले भी मैं यहाँ हलीफैक्स में रहता था तो कुछ बुज़ुर्ग हैं जो मुझे अच्छी तरह से जानते हैं और मैं आपकी तरह जानता हूँ मेरे घर कोठी है और मेरे थाल अपना कोठा नथिया ये सब रिश्तेदार सब मेरे करीब वाले हैं मैं अच्छी तरह जानता हूँ तो जिस आदमी को हम पेश करने के लिए आए हैं मिस्टर जोज गैलरी उनका नाम आप सब ने सुना होगा थोड़ा सा तारफ मैं इनका कराना चाहता हूं आपके साथ और फिर मैं इंग्लिश में बात करूंगा थोड़ी क्योंकि इनको उर्दू भी याद है ये लेबर पार्टी के एक सीनियर मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट काफी पांच बार रह चुके हैं सीनियर थे इतने सीनियर थे कि अगर उन्होंने अपना करियर दाव पर ना लगाते तो शायद वो बहुत ही सीनियर आजकल पहुँच चुके होंगे लेकिन इनका शुरू से आदत यह है कि ये हक सच और इंसाफ की बात जहाँ पर होती है वो हक सच बात हक हक सच और इंसाफ की ही बात करते हैं बेशक खुद को नुकसान हो जाए आपने देखा होगा कि इन्होंने कश्मीर के मसले में जिंदगी भर आवाज उठाई इनको दो जो मेडल भी हैं वो भी मिले हुए हैं एक खिलाल पाकिस्तान मिला हुआ है एक खिलाल कायद आजम भी इनको दिया हुआ है जो कुछ हफ्ते पहले पाकिस्तान गए थे इनमें बड़े शौक से और बड़ी फख्र से अपने सीने पर सजा कर वहाँ जाते हैं हर साल दूसरा जो इशू इन्होंने जिंदगी भर मेहनत की है वो है एक पालस्टाइन का मसला है जैसे कश्मीर जैसे हम लोगों मुसलमानों के लिए पालस्टाइन का भी बहुत बड़ा मसला है गाजा आप जानते हैं कि उसके आगे पीछे एक रुकावट बनी हुई है और कुछ ना उनको पानी साफ मिलता है ना खाना मिलता है ना कपड़ा मिलता है ना कुछ घर बनाने के लिए माल मिलता है जो घर उनके हैं वो तोड़े जाते हैं और नए बनाने की इजाज़त तक नहीं ये शख्स है जिसने पिछले 40-50 साल से 40-50 साल कह तो सकता है आदमी लेकिन बहुत होते हैं कुर्बानी देने के लिए और सर्विस देने के लिए इन्होंने बेहद खिदमत की हमारे हमारे इस्तेमाल होने के लिए जहाँ भी दुनिया में ज़रूरत हुई इनका आवाज़ हमेशा पहुँचा है आज हमारी ये खुशकस्मती है कि ब्रेडफोर्ड में ये हमारे अंदर पालन होते हैं तो वहाँ इन्होंने काफ़ी काम किया हम सब शुरू से लेबर पार्टी के थे हम जब वर्किंग क्लास लोग थे हमारे लीडरों फैक्ट्रियों में हमें जानता हूँ कि काफ़ी मेहनत बुजुर्ग होने के लिए यहाँ तो हम अभी लोग नहीं हैं लेकिन हमारे जैसे वर्किंग क्लास लोग हैं ये हमेशा रिप्रजेंट करते रह गए अब ये आप लोग पूछ रहे होंगे या कुछ ने पूछा भी है कि ये मकसद क्या है कि ये हमारे शहर में आ रहे हैं थोड़ा सा ये बताएंगे लेकिन मुख्तर जो है मैं आपके सामने पेश करना चाहता हूँ जैसे आप जानते हैं सब लेबर पार्टी के मेंबर थे जहाँ लेबर पार्टी के भी हैं लेबर जैन भी थे यहाँ टोरी पार्टी के भी कैंडिडेट्स हैं यहाँ लेकिन मकसद यह कि हम सब एक ही लोग हैं कभी एक आता है कभी दूसरा आता है कभी एक झंडा पकड़ता है कभी दूसरा पकड़ता है लेकिन यहाँ होता क्या है आपका शहर हमारे ब्रेडफुट के इतना है लेकिन हमारा होता है की हमारे मन तो जाते हैं काउंसिलर लेकिन फिर वो पाँच साल बैठ जाते हैं वो करते कुछ भी नहीं क्योंकि हम सब मिलकर उनको उससे आप बचाते हैं कभी ये नहीं पूछते हम कि आप जब इलेक्ट हो जाएंगे तो करेंगे क्या हमारे स्कूल फेल रहे हैं फेल हो रहे हैं आप करेंगे क्या कभी नहीं पूछते हैं जब हमारे दरवाजा वो फिर कराते हैं वो कहते हैं कि हमें वोट दो अब तो वो बेहतरीन चले जाते
quite a result here. Uh, Asma is a well-known person within Halifax and Prasa. Uh, I'm quite uh, amazed to see so many people at this time of the evening uh, with short social uh, notice. Firstly, a lot of the people here uh, are family, and I know we're all kind of different parties, but we're all one big family. And some of the issues that people have gone through in Halifax are very, very similar to the kind of issues we in Bradford have gone through. Uh, I've lived here in uh, Halifax as a child uh, when I was very, very young. Uh, those some stuff will remember me, uh, for those who will remember me as, uh, as well. Uh, I have also lived here 10 years ago for a few years, and so I have a lot of family here. And uh, it's like home. Bradford is my home, this is also my home on my mother's side. So firstly, thank you very much for your welcome. As we have only a limited amount of time, I'm not going to waste any further time, but I want to introduce you to this gentleman who you all know has uh, been a Member of Parliament for six times. Hopefully, with the uh, blessings of uh, Allah, we will be a uh, seventh time a Member of Parliament in fact. He has presented many television programs, he has presented radio programs, he writes columns in newspapers, he travels around the world, but his mission has always been one and that is to spread peace, justice, and equality wherever he can, he can go. Wherever his voice reaches, he, uh, he, he makes sure that he, his voice gets there and speaks for those issues that affect people like this uh, all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to give him a big, warm, Halifax welcome, please, Mr. George Gavin. Standing, but then I'm no critic. But it's the longest speech I've heard you make in your own language. And it was fitting uh, because this is an outstanding meeting, Councillor. I had no idea that you would assemble this number of powerful and influential people for the opening of this campaign headquarters. I can tell you that there are more people here today than were present at the launch. Mind you, it was her fourth launch of my opponent at Bradford West, and she had a shadow minister uh, as an attraction. This is a quite outstanding start to your campaign, about which I'll say more uh, in a moment. But I thought I'd bring you the hot news just off the press or just off the telephone at least, that respect is now spreading so fast and so far <coughs> that just in the last few minutes uh, we have appointed a candidate to stand for parliament in the Blackburns constituency where Jack Straw is standing down, not before he was pushed down, he ought to have been pushed down. Uh, We're standing in Oldham and in Birmingham, and here, of course, in Halifax. It was uh, the case, as Arshad said, that I have spent almost 30 years in Parliament, and God willing and the electorate willing, I'll spend five more uh, after the 7th of May. But I have seldom come across. I have seldom come across an individual who has instantly impressed me with the impact that she would make in the House of Commons than Councillor Asma Dari. She is a commanding figure, as you saw how she commanded people to move their seats and, and so on uh, earlier today. She has authority, she has gravity. But most of all, she has the common touch, the popular touch. Many politicians, certainly Ed Miliband, would find it very difficult to move amongst ordinary people and behave and act like a normal human being. Councillor Asma has none of these shortcomings. She's a decisive and dynamic person, extremely strong, with a knack of finding the right words 
to express the ideas and the arguments that we wish to make and need to make. One of our most famous was when describing the council leadership in Bradford. She said, I'm more of a man than any ten of those. <laughs> and she is, mashallah, a powerful, strong figure. And that's what Halifax needs. And it's been some time since you had that. And you're not going to get that from the junior figure with the double-barreled name that Labour have chosen to parachute onto you as the Labour candidate. You're simply not going to get that. A woman of 28 years old who's never done anything in her life except work for another Member of Parliament imagines that you can just become a Member of Parliament with no track record of public service, no uh, apprenticeship as a councillor, no training. She wants you to follow her as if she were a donkey in the fair just because she has the right rosette on. I said right rosette, not red rosette, which is what we used to say, which is another subject to which I shall return. Frankly, the contrast between this woman who has lived, a wife, a mother, a lawyer, a human rights lawyer, a community activist, with a record of public service and works as long as you're armed, with a juvenile apprentice that Labour have chosen here. But of course they only managed to get her in here as their candidate by ruling out well over a hundred Labour Party members who were bona fide legitimate members and who had a right to a vote to choose <coughs> the Labour candidate. They ruled them out for one reason only, and that reason was that they came from your community. <coughs> and that's Labour's attitude to this community. They want your votes. They want you to get your knuckles red banging on doors for them. But don't dare imagine that you can take positions of power and influence. The only people from your community who are allowed power and influence in the mainstream parties are those who will act as stooges, as puppets for those who really have the power. A woman like Asma would never agree to be anyone's stooge, anyone's puppet, and therefore Labour grew away from her. We have an example now operating in Bradford, though he's an MP in Birmingham, Perry Barr, a man called Khalid Mahmoud, who's the MP for Perry Barr, but spends all his time in my constituency trying to defeat me. Why? Because he's a stooge. And not just a stooge for the Labour leadership. That would be bad enough. He's a stooge for the George Bushites in the United States. He's a stooge for Israel. He's one of the leaders of something called the Henry Jackson Society, which is the main Israel organization in the world. And he's one of their leaders, with a name like Khaled Mahmoud. Which brings me to a subject I would not ordinarily have touched upon. But today's news is dominated by it. Just before the war in Iraq, just before Bush and Blair, launched their murderous <laughs> invasion and occupation of Iraq, which killed a million Muslims. Khalid Mahmoud put his name to an article in the Observer newspaper supporting the war. I say put his name, he of course didn't write the article, he's as thick as two planks. <laughs> he couldn't write, he couldn't fill in a, a coloring book. But Dennis McShane, you remember him? The then Foreign Office Minister, Labour Member of Parliament for Rotherham, later detained at Her Majesty's pleasure in some penitentiary or other for fiddling thousands of pounds of his expenses. He wrote the article and told Mahmoud, we need a Muslim name at the bottom of this article. 
to justify the invasion of Iraq. And Mahmoud duly gave him his name. That's the kind of Asian MPs they want. That they can get to do their dirty work for them. Not representing this community in parliament, but representing parliament in this community. That's the kind of Asian candidates and members of parliament they want. Well, asthma, as you've already gathered, quite simply isn't like that. Now, I wasn't going to deal with the war, but as Tony Blair is dominating the news throughout today, he's at the head of every news bulletin tonight, because some idiot in the Labour leadership has decided that seeing Tony Blair's face, hearing Tony Blair's voice again, is somehow going to enthuse people to go out and vote Labour. My goodness, this meeting gets bigger and bigger. It's all more like that. Uh, what kind of madness is this? Tony Blair killed a million people. He's made a hundred million pounds out of killing a million people. And Labour brings them out in the general election campaign to speak for them. What kind of <coughs> madness is that? As you know, respect came into being directly as a result of the Iraq war. We were the leaders of the movement against that war. Everybody in the country now knows that we were right and they were wrong. It's almost exactly 10 years <coughs> since I went to the United States Senate and confronted them in their own palace in the court of the Sultan. I confronted them, just one man from Scotland, in front of these powerful senators, and told them what lying murderers they were, and how God would never forgive them, and I, as long as I had breath, would make sure that people never forgive them either. This war invasion didn't just stop at the killing of a million Iraqis. There were people like you, by the way, who prayed the same as you, who believe in the line of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, just like you. People like you they killed. People like your sons, your mothers. This invasion didn't just kill a million Iraqis. It sent violence and extremism cascading everywhere around the world, including in our own country. We've got our young people hopping on airplanes, trying to get to Turkey, trying to get to Syria, where they'll probably be killed. Such is the rage that has developed amongst the Ummah at the crimes these people have committed. Tony Blair's the peace envoy in the Middle East. You couldn't make that up. Last summer in Gaza, the blood was running in the streets. Thousands of Palestinians were murdered, 500 of them children, and Blair didn't raise a finger, not even a voice, not even a word, to try and stop it. Our political leaders back Israel in every crime that it commits. Well, not us. To get on in the Labour Party, you've got to be a member of the Labour Friends of Israel. I promise you something. There will never be a respect, Friends of Israel. That is for sure. We know where we stand on these issues. And of course, the extremism... And the reaction to the extremism is now affecting us here at home. If a Muslim is convicted of some foul crime against a young child, he becomes a Muslim groomer. Jimmy Savile was never a Catholic groomer. Cyril Smith was never a Protestant groomer. Nobody asked the white people in Rochdale to apologize.
apologize for the vile crimes of Cyril Smith. Nobody asked the white people in Leeds or even the BBC to apologize for the vile crimes of Jimmy Savile. But when it happens in this community, you're all to blame. You're all responsible. It's your fault. When are you going to speak out against it? If a white man kills 60 children in Norway, or is this guy in, uh, what's the name, something hills in the United States, murders three Muslims. Chapel Hill. Chapel Hill murders three Muslims on their knees. Nobody says this is something that white people are responsible for. But if any member of this community out of the rage and anger that has been generated, commit some terrible terrorist crime. It's all of your fault. You're all responsible for it. And you've all got to speak out against it. And where they don't have evidence to convict you, they make it up. The Trojan horse turned out to be a Trojan hoax. It was made up. An anonymous letter with made up allegations that Muslims were trying to take over schools was judged by the House of Commons itself just a few weeks ago to have been a hoax. And yet, as a child in the street said to me the other day in Bradford, we have special children there. They say it's a hoax, but they're building all their policies on the hoax. Theresa May is coming your way. You may not have read the fine print, but I have. If the Tories get back, Theresa May is going to take a whole new raft of powers to hunt you, including for the first time since Henry VIII, giving the government the power to close down a mosque Henry VIII was the last man who gave himself the power to close a religion down. Theresa May is the new Henry VIII. <coughs> She's going to take a new power called the Mosque Closure Order. She doesn't like the khutbah in your mosque. She has the power, or will have the power, to close it down. I have no idea what she thinks that will achieve, because of course everyone will just go to another mosque. People are not going to stop praying. But if they do go to another mosque, they'll close that mosque down. They're cracking down on Muslim parents becoming school governors whilst going around the country begging non-Muslims to become school governors. It's democracy. If non-Muslims become school governors, it's a conspiracy. If Muslims become a school governor. So you need people in Parliament, in the Council, who are going to stand up for you, who are going to defend you in the language and with the power that I'm doing now. Do you really think this 28-year-old Labour candidate is going to do that? Do you really think she's going to speak for you, defend you, stand up for you? I don't believe anyone in their heart believes that. So. It's decision time. You know, I always make this point. I mentioned donkeys earlier. If you send donkeys to Parliament or to the Council, don't expect them to behave as anything other than donkeys. If you want lions, if you want a lioness, you'll send her to Parliament. And I'll tell you this, you'll hear her roar from London, right up, echoing in Halifax, as you're about to find out if you haven't heard her speak before. Now, once upon a time, the donkeys wore red rosettes. They don't wear red rosettes anymore. There's nothing labor about today's labor. They're the opposite of labor. Labor was on the side of working people. The Blair and Brown governments helped to cause the crash in 2008 because they were not the workers' friend, they were the bankers' friend. They lifted the regulations that stopped banks behaving in the criminal, reckless, negligent.
negligent way that our country was almost destroyed by it. A party that used to be the party of the millions became the party of the millionaires. And you all know that that's true. This is not the labor that I was in for 36 years before Tony Blair expelled me over the Iraq war. It's not the labor that Councillor Asma was in or Councillor Ishtiak. It's not the labor that any of you were in. And if you're still in it, you already know that. You already know that the Labour Party today bears no resemblance at all to what Labour is supposed to mean. And heaven knows, Halifax and Bradford are two cities that desperately need real Labour policies. And that's what we are. That's why they hate us so much. Because we are the ghost of their past. When they see us, hear us, read us, they're reading what they used to say, what they used to believe in, and which is still desperately needed by millions of people around this country, not the least of them, the people of Halifax. Wassalamu alaikum. Thank you very much.
It is up to our councillors and our members of parliament to fight for each and every one of us in this community and get us better employment, get us better education, get us better health in our, in our hospitals. And I'm not going to go on about the hospital, because you all know the problems that the, your local hospital has had and has, have, has had over the last many, many years now. These are your services. If your children in school are failing, it's not because they are thick or they are stupid or they're not able to learn. It's because the system is failing them. And we need to demand better services. We have Councillor Ishtiak here from Bradford, he's from our, my uh, local council in Manigam. Uh, we have uh, uh, other uh, brothers here from Bradford. You please be, feel free to talk to them about the kind of work we're doing in Bradford. No, I won't go on any further. You want to, uh, Tony, 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 may I ask you, sir, to come forward and, uh, and say a few words? Uh, yes, you. Mr. Tony McGovern, please. ਸੋ ਆਇਸਤਾ ਆਇਸਤਾ ਕਰਦੇ 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 4 ਸਾਲ ਤੱਕ 
ਮੈਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਕਰਦੀ ਰਿਆਂ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਕਿਉਂ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸੇਮ ਡੈਪਟੀ ਲੀਡਰ ਹੈ ਸੇਮ ਐਗਜ਼ੀਕਿਊਟਿਵ ਦੇ ਪੋਜੀਸ਼ਨ ਨੇ ਸੇਮ ਚੇਅਰਸ ਨੇ ਮੈਂਬਰਸ ਦੇ ਵਾਈ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਸਭ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਤੈ ਹੋਇਆ ਹੈ ਯੂ ਜਸਟ ਗੋ ਇਨ ਉਥੇ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਸਨ ਐਂਡੋਸ ਕਰਦੇ ਸਨ ਕਿ ਸਰ ਨੂੰ ਕੋਈ ਮੌਕਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਦੇ ਰਹੇ ਸਨ ਕੁਝ ਕਰਨੇ ਦਾ ਸੋ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਸਵਾਲ ਜਵਾਬ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਬਵੀਅਸਲੀ ਮੇਰੀ ਇਹ ਪੋਜੀਸ਼ਨ ਆ ਗਈ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਇਸ ਹੱਦ ਤੱਕ ਪਹੁੰਚ ਗਿਆ ਹੈ ਕਮ ਕਿ ਆਈ ਕੈਨ ਨਾਟ ਅਗਰੀ ਟੂ ਇਟ ਆਈ ਕੈਨ ਨਾਟ ਮੇਰਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਐਂਡੋਸ ਕਰਨਾ ਇਹ ਹੋਏਗਾ ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਆ ਚੋਣੀ ਬਲੈਕ ਲਾ ਰਿਆ ਇਹ ਉਹ ਕਾਤੀ ਲੈ ਅਸਾ ਵੀ ਕਾਤੇ ਨਾ ਇਸ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਨਾਲ ਸੋਚਣਾ ਹੈ ਅੱਜ ਜੋੜ ਗੱਲ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਨੂੰ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਇਹ ਟਰੀਜ਼ਾ ਮੇ ਪਲਾਨ ਕਰ ਕਰ ਲਈਏ ਮਸ ਡਿਸਕਲੋਜਰ ਕਲੋਜਰ ਨੋਟਿਸਿਸ ਇਹ ਹਰੀ ਟਰੀਜ਼ਾ ਮੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰ ਦਈਏ ਲੇਬਰ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਵੀ ਕਰ ਚੁੱਕੀ ਹੈ ਲੇਬਰ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਹੈਲੀਫੈਕਸ ਇਹ ਕੰਮ ਕਰ ਚੁੱਕੀ ਹੈ 2013 ਵਿੱਚ ਅਗਰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਤੁਸਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਯਾਦ ਹੈ ਇੱਥੇ ਇੱਕ ਇਦਾਰਾ ਸੀ ਮਦਰਸਾ ਖੁੱਲਣ ਲੱਗਾ ਸੀ ਲੇਬਰ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਵਾਲੇ ਲਿੰਡਰ ਰਿਓਡਰ ਪਾਰਲੀਮੈਂਟ ਵਿੱਚ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਗਈ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਇਸ ਅਦਾਰੇ ਦੀ ਫੰਡਿੰਗ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਬੰਦ ਕਰੋ ਔਰ ਕਿਸ ਬੰਦੇ ਹੈਲਪ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਲਿੰਡਾ ਦੀ ਇਹ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨੀ ਮੁਸਲਮਾਨ ਬੱਚੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਲੇਬਰ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਚੋਂ ਤੁਸਾਂ ਦੇ ਵੋਟ ਮੰਗਦੇ ਫਿਰਦੇ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਦਰਵਾਜ਼ੇ ਕਰਦੇ ਫਿਰਦੇ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਹਰ ਮੋਲ ਵੀ ਕੋਲ ਗਏ ਨੇ ਹਰ ਸਕੂਲ ਕੋਲ ਗਏ ਨੇ ਕਿ ਲੈਟਰ ਪਰ ਸਾਈਨ ਕਰੋ ਇਹਦਾ ਫੰਡਿੰਗ ਬੰਦ ਕਰੋ ਇਹ ਇੰਤਹਾਈ ਪਸੰਦ ਦੇ ਐਕਸਟ੍ਰੀਮਿਸਟ ਨੇ ਔਰ ਉਹ ਫੰਡਿੰਗ ਬੰਦ ਹੋ ਗਈ ਸੀ 2013 ਵਿੱਚ ਅਖਬਾਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਹਲੀਫੈਕਸ ਕੁਰੀਅਰ ਯੋਕਸ਼ਰ ਪੋਸਟ ਔਰ ਜਨ ਨਿਊਜ਼ ਪੇਪਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਔਰ ਉਹ ਕਟਿੰਗਸ ਮੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਪੇ ਨੇ ਜਿਸ ਕਿਸੇ ਦੇਖਣਾ ਹੈ ਕਨਫਰਮ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਇਸ ਆਫਿਸ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਕਟਿੰਗ ਹੋਏਗੀ ਤੇ ਇਸ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਇਹ ਕੀ ਕਰਦੇ ਤੇ ਪਾਰਟੀਆਂ ਖਾਸ ਕਰ ਲੇਬਰ ਪਾਰਟੀਆਂ ਇਹ ਏਸ਼ੀਅਨ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮੁਸਲਮਾਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਯੂਜ਼ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਦੂਜੇ ਦੇ ਖਿਲਾਫ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਔਰ ਸਾਡੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਖੁਦ ਸਾਡਾ ਇਮਾਨ ਇਤਨਾ ਕਮਜ਼ੋਰ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਅਸਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਜਾਲ ਵਿੱਚ ਫਸ ਜਾ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਇਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੋਚਦੇ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੀ ਬੈਠੀ ਕੀ ਹੈ ਦੂਸਰੀ ਪੋਜੀਸ਼ਨ ਜਿਹਦੀ ਜਿਸ ਨਾਲ ਮੈਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਕਨਸਰਨ ਹੋਇਆ ਕਿ ਇਸ ਤਕਾਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਸੀ ਲਾਸਟ ਵੀਕ ਜਿਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੈਂ ਆਈ ਸਾਂ ਔਰ ਨੇਬਰਹੁੱਡ ਕੁਈਨਜ਼ ਰੋਡ ਨੇਬਰਹੁੱਡ ਸੈਂਟਰ ਸੀ ਔਰ ਆਈ ਵਾਸ ਵੈਰੀ ਇੰਟਰਸਟ ਕਿ ਦੇਖੋ ਸੋ ਸੋ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਬੰਦਾ ਆਏ ਨੇ ਬਜ਼ੁਰਗ ਸਨ ਯੰਗ ਬੰਦੇ ਸਨ ਐਂਡ ਫਕਰ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਮੇਰੇ ਮੌਕਾ ਮਿਲਿਆ ਹੈ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਪਾਰਟ ਆਫ ਦਾ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਜਿਸ ਨੇ ਮੈਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਮਿਰਜ਼ਾ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੂੰ ਪੁੱਛਿਆ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜਿਹਨਾਂ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜ਼ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਹਾਊ ਇਜ਼ ਦਿਸ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਹਾਲ ਤੋ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਸੇ ਹੀ ਹੈ ਟੂ ਪੇ ਫॉर ਇਟ ਪੈਸੇ ਦੇ ਕੇ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਲਿਬਰ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਦੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੀ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਮਨਾਇਆ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਫੈਕਟਰੀ ਔਰ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨੀ ਚੁੱਪ ਹੋ ਆਈ ਡੋਨਟ ਅੰਡਰਸਟੈਂਡ ਉਧਰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਨਾਰੇ ਲਾਉਂਦੇ ਹੋ ਕਸ਼ਮੀਰ ਦੇ ਨਾਰੇ ਲਾਉਂਦੇ ਹੋ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਪੈਸੇ ਵੀ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਭੇਜਦੇ ਹੋ ਵੀ ਲੁਫ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਉਧਰ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਪੇਇੰਗ ਜੋ ਸਮਾਂ ਕਿ ਹਾਉ ਮਚ ਕੌਂਸਲ ਆਪ ਨੇ ਜੇਬ ਸੇ ਦਿੱਤੇ ਨੇ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਇਹ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਇਵੈਂਟ ਨੂੰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸੈਲੀਬ੍ਰੇਟ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਵਿਦਆਊਟ ਪੇਇੰਗ ਫॉर ਪੇਇੰਗ ਫॉर ਇਟ ਬੜੀ ਸ਼ਰਮਨਾਕ ਅਫਸੋਸ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੈ ਸ਼ੈਮ ਸ਼ੇਅਰਫੁਲ ਸ਼ੇਅਰਫੁਲ ਤੇ ਪਰ ਬੰਦੇ ਚੁੱਪ ਨੇ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਵਾਟ ਆ ਡੋਨਟ ਅੰਡਰਸਟੈਂਡ ਦੂਸਰੀ ਗੱਲ ਇਹ ਮੈਂ ਦੇਖੀ ਹੈ ਹੈਲੀਫੈਕਸ ਇਸ ਸਾਰੇ ਬਜ਼ੁਰਗ ਮਸਜਿਦ ਦੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਨੇ ਮਸਜਿਦ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਫਿਰ ਉਹ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਕੀ ਰਜ਼ੋਸ ਹੈ ਸਾਰੇ ਬਜ਼ੁਰਗਾਂ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਇੱਥੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਮ
bought a cake for me, especially, and it's got a rose on, which is red, and the leaves are green, the color of respect. So I have a knife here, which has been provided <laughs> by my neighbors. So would you like to put the cake for the A-team? <laughs> Asthma was so powerful that when she held up a knife that I was a little bit anxious. Can I just introduce Mrs. Galloway yes. here, in case you're wondering who she is. May God bless the campaign rooms and all who are working on the campaign. Oh, the loud cover. There we go.